Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Liberty Ministries. I'm so glad that you could be here with us tonight. And um, I want to just um, give a praise report, okay? And, um, you know, when someone receives Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, then that's a time to rejoice, amen? We had um, one of our members, sister, who passed away. She'd been sick a long time. Her name was Lisa. And they had her funeral today. And her sister, Becky, who is a member of our church here, uh, she preached the funeral. Well, I understand that, right? And um, she had some of her family members that she had been praying for for a long time for their salvation, and they got saved at the funeral. So let's just give God glory for that. Amen. Hallelujah. The angels are rejoicing. Amen. Um, I want to make an announcement, too, again, um, another announcement. is Sunday night. We're going to have our Christmas sing-along musical. Uh, it's not going to be anything real formal, uh, you know, nothing like a cantata or a play or a drama or anything like that. But we're just going to get together and sing Christmas carols and just worship God and, and thank God and praise Him for his, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we do have a special guest coming. Uh, he plays a trumpet like I have never heard before, uh, like nobody can. His name is David Blackstock. He's coming uh, and uh, going to minister in song on his trumpet. Um, and um, so you don't want to miss this, okay? And I want to say, too, that my son, Evan Smith, is going to be singing a solo Sunday night. I'm so, I'm so excited, you know, as a mom. <laughs> you know, I'm so proud of him. And um, so those of you who are watching on the Internet, if you're in the Greenville area and you don't have a place to go to church, we invite you here, okay? Anytime, anytime uh, we have services here, we invite you to be with us. So... Um, Anyway, this is Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to have our Christmas sing-along music, and uh, we're just going to worship God and have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Okay, so if we all can stand, and let's sing uh, praises unto our God. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning.
fountain full of grace and it flows from Emmanuel's veins it came and it healed me it came and refreshed me it came and washed my
Lift up your hands tonight with me and just say, Lord, we worship you. You're so holy. We love you, Jesus. 
thank you for being our Savior, our Redeemer. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to his precious name. For he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. We honor you in this house tonight. We give you, for sure, Lord, all the glory. All glory, honor, and praise and worship goes to you, Lord. We worship you, for you're so holy, Lord. We magnify your name. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. He's, in, he's so awesome in this place tonight. You can feel his beautiful, holy, gentle, quiet presence in here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to ask our ushers to come now and receive God's tithes and our offerings. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight, and especially Woody and Sandra. We're glad to have them. Amen. And Brother Bonner, after Nathan gives the word tonight, uh, Brother Bonner has something to share, and I'm, I know it's going to be good too, and we're happy to have him to do that tonight. Becky did a wonderful job in that memorial service for her sister today. And um, as, as my sister was saying a few minutes ago, Melissa, there were, there were s several people in her family that got saved, and it was just such a blessing. And she did a wonderful job. And, you know, it takes the grace of God to stand up when you've just lost a loved one and, and minister the word. But she was so excited about ministering to her family. And, you know, if we can be an example to our families and win our families to the Lord, that's one of the most beautiful things in life. It's because we want to see our families in heaven with us, don't we? Praise God for what he did today. And, uh, Dwayne, would you lead us in this offering prayer? up your hands no need to mourn his hand is stretched out still
Nothing's wrong with your audio, I'm here. <laughs> it just takes a second. <laughs> How is everybody tonight? Just all right? Praise God. Um... have a very long one tonight. I wanted to, um, I, I, I know around this time we don't, uh, we're not always full and we're right in the middle of a, a study on the kingdom mandate which we've been going over and I always, uh, I hate for a lot of people to miss a part. Have you ever, uh, Y'all remember when you were in school, you ever were sick and you missed a few days of class and you had to work real hard to catch up? Well, you know, you could still pass and miss some days, but this stuff that I have been teaching you guys is so important. It, it's not about getting a B or a C. It's so important because it helps you to bring the most out of life. It helps you to get the keys, to, to put in the right key in the right lock and get access. Uh, none of us, does anybody just love praying and never getting an answer? Do you like ever praising and worshiping and not feeling any glory at all? Or uh, Is there anybody like that? No. We want to see our prayers answered, don't we? And so that's what, um, that's what God is doing with us. He is, he is unlocking his mysteries. He's opening it up to us. He wants us to know it, doesn't he? I, I'm so thankful that he wants us to know it. I want to, um, I want to be like the disciples. It says that Jesus, whenever he was speaking to the, to the disciples, he said, you have secret knowledge, is what he told them. And that's what I want. I, want to, I don't want to just know about God. I want to know God. And I want to know this Bible because it's the constitution of the kingdom. Amen? And the good thing about the kingdom is 
it covers everything under creation, whether seen or unseen. If you live in America, you want to know the laws, don't you? Because you want to know what not to do, and you know you want to know what your rights are. And so that's the kind of stuff that we're learning. We're finding out what our rights are, and we're, we're finding it out in a, a way that is practical. Uh, when I was a child, it seemed like a lot of the stuff that, my, that I was being raised about, I, 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 there, I, there was no practicality to it. It was just like a hit and miss thing. And I seen in the Bible, it was just like, boom, boom, things happened, right? And so, you know, here in the Western world, unfortunately, we have a lot of people who uh, they, they go through life, even as a Christian, and it's almost like they treat this, uh, treat this Bible as if it's uh, magic, if you will, if I can use that very loosely, because they hope it works. They know that there's some people that can, can use it, and they see it work in their lives, but for some reason they can't get it to work for them, so, so they try some things. God it doesn't want us to just have to try some things all the time and try to make it through life. He wants us to thrive. He wants us to be able to stick in the right key and, with, and get the access that we need. He wants it to be practical, to be able to apply it. Amen? Uh, if you guys went to college or if you went to school, you, would you hate to take a test and every single time you knew when you were studying in class, two plus two was four. But then when it come down to taking the test, you say, oh, two plus two, it's four. And then the teacher says, no, not today, it's three. Wouldn't that be frustrating? <laughs> well, that's the way a lot of people have feel about the Bible sometimes. It, it, because they feel like I've read it and I've tried to apply it, but sometimes it just doesn't seem to happen. Well, there's a reason why. They, it, there's some things that they don't understand. You can't get God's attention and get prayers through if you have unforgiveness in, in your heart. But if all you're thinking is, well, I just got to pray, I got to pray, I got to ask, well, you're not going to get nothing through. There's something else that needs to be applied, right? So that's the kind of stuff that we are, um, we're currently talking about on, uh, on the Sunday night service that uh, I've, I've been honored to be able to do. Uh, but I wanted to break from that a little bit tonight because... Obviously, many of us aren't here on Wednesday, and especially this close to, the, to Christmas. And so I wanted to uh, do something just a little bit different so that nobody misses the very, very, very important stuff. Amen? Amen? Lord, I think they're asleep as well, God. <laughs> I'm all by myself. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Um. I'm going to uh, give you guys just a little bit of history. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. Um, we're going to, I was wanting to do some prayer tonight, and I, uh, I'm glad Brother Bonner's here because I think the Lord is, uh, I, I, you know, I was praying. I, I knew the Lord wanted to pray for some people tonight, and I didn't know what for. And uh, I was just searching through this message, trying to say, Lord, you, you just guide me. And I was glad when I got here, and Brother Bonner has a word. So, um there's going to be some prayers, I believe, that will be answered. Amen. Does anybody have some prayers they need answered? I know Donna definitely does. We're believing for her healing. Amen. Um, I want to talk just for, just briefly on the subject of, of Christmas. Christmas is a wonderful time, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to go into Christmas the way... Some of you may think I'm just gonna. I want to go over a few things though. Christmas, uh, the early one of the earliest writings that we have about Christmas was uh, around 354 A.D. And there's a reason why we have Christmas. And actually, Christmas. Uh, how many know Christmas has become uh, commercialized and it doesn't hold its true meaning, even though we sometimes say that it's a, 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 about the Lord's birth, and we, we, we say it's about these things, all you hear is presents and, and, and put up all the, all the stuff around the house, and you, you know, that's the stuff that you think about, and watching the Christmas movies and Santa Claus, and we've got all these other things that we have surrounded around Christmas, and we've missed the whole point, amen? And so it is important, I, I think, the level that sometimes, and I don't know 
how every family does, but the level that we have some households who uh, lift up Christmas or gifts or, or Santa Claus, if it's one, then we need to make sure that we elevate Christ up to a hundred or a thousand, amen, because it needs to be the centerpiece, but sometimes it's just like an afterthought, but it needs to be the most important thing that we uh that we associate with Christmas because it's what Christmas is all about. It's got Christ in it, amen? And uh, Christmas, the reason why Christmas come around, it's, it's actually a wonderful celebrated thing because it is a sign that the kingdom is taking back over the earth. How many know that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God one day? Well, back then they used to have these festivals that they would always celebrate around winter solstice. And winter solstice would always coincide with the, the shortest day of the year and the longest night of the year. And they would have these festivals, and they were pagan festivals, and they would celebrate all kinds of stuff uh, during winter solstice. One of the things that they would celebrate was, um, uh, anybody ever heard of the Yule Log? Well, the, the Yule Log was a huge log they would get. They would sometimes even have contests of who, could ha who had the biggest log and they would burn it, and it would burn all night. And at, if you look into history, sometimes they would even take a whole tree, and they would throw the whole end of the trunk into the tree. Can you imagine this tree coming out of there? And you see the tree laying out in the floor. Of course, they didn't have carpet because the house would burn up. Uh, but they would let this thing catch on fire, and they would keep it burning during the entire thing. Uh, this They celebrated the worship of of, of, of forest and of earth and uh, all of these things, but it had this part had nothing to do with Christ. But there were many people that were a part of it. They during winter solstice they would also I have to write this down because I always forget how to pronounce this. Uh, they would also worship this god. Well, the festival was called Saturnalia, Saturnalia, and they would worship the deity of Saturn. That was a a pagan Roman mythological god, but they, they worshipped uh, her, and the way that they did it was by uh, uh, gift giving. And so you had scores of people, tons of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people all over Europe that, were, uh, that did this. It was just part of what they were used to. And they enjoyed the festival. They enjoyed having the time off because during this time of winter solstice, all of the businesses would shut down Everything would shut down. Can you imagine if, if you weren't a part of this and they'd say, oh, well, you don't celebrate that? Well, then you can work. Well, you know, you're going to think kind of twice about converting because you're going to think, man, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go celebrate because you want a day off. Well, as after Jesus died and we, they began to celebrate the birth and they would celebrate the death of Jesus and they had all these things they celebrated about him, but there was always still this winter solstice. And as people began to convert all across Europe and began to serve uh, the Lord, they still had a, they were still tied to this, this occasion. The entire town would, would shut down and they didn't want to lose this festival and literally some of them would not convert. Can you imagine that you would not want to get saved because you would, are afraid that you, you're going to lose something? It don't really sound too uncommon to today, does it? Well, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose my beer. I don't want to lose my drugs. I don't want to lose my nightclubs. Don't they do it? Have you ever heard anybody that said that? Well, I'll get saved later because they want to enjoy the things they have now, even though sin is just for a season. Amen. And so, what they did is they said, you know what? We need to begin to celebrate this on a different day because they believe that Christmas was celebrated actually about nine months earlier than December 25th, but they changed it. Is this new to anybody? Everybody knows all this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and shut down. We can pray. <laughs> um, and so <clears throat> they, would, they uh, said, you know, we need to take over this time because we got people who don't want to change because they're afraid they're going to lose their, their holiday. They're afraid they're going to lose their day off. They're afraid they're going to lose their festival. And so what they did is they said, you know, let's celebrate it at the same time. 
and they said, and let's take everything we can out of it that is pagan, but let's add, let's redo some of these things that can apply to what Christ is to us. And so they would light candles during this time, and so now those candles would represent that the light has come into the world. Amen. Uh, let's um, turn real quick. I want to make sure I give you all some scriptures so you all don't think I'm a, a heretic. Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm going to uh, read from verse 2 through 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. I love this. these next two verses. You should seriously consider, if you underline stuff in your Bible, you should seriously consider underlining this because these are very important scriptures. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Somebody say the government returning to earth. How many think we need new government? Amen? I don't care what party or what group you like, even if they're in office, even if your chosen group holds the majority in the House and in the Senate, we still need better government. Amen? I have never seen a time, either today nor in the history of this word, where we did not need better government. Because as long as man is governing, you're going to have some sort of chaos, some sort of contamination. I want to get back to the way it was in the beginning when God was the king and we were lived under him. Can, can y'all imagine? I cannot wait. I can't wait to that time. I know it, it talks about it uh, in Isaiah how we'll come. There'll be no seas because after all, you know, you, you'll be able to walk straight over there. You'll be able to move, I believe, at the speed of thought. But can you imagine that once per year you come and you you make your uh, you give your offering to the king? I don't know about y'all, but I, I want to be able to do it all the time. Amen. I, I don't see myself saying, you know what, I'm going to go to the other side of the globe. I know that he'll be everywhere, but wherever the most, the, the most filling of his presence is, that's where I want to be. Amen? Man, I, I get excited about that. I get excited about seeing this earth return to its natural state. I get excited about seeing all of this right now that's called night that we have. It's like someone turning turning on the switch and everything lighting up. I get excited that, you know, I, I can see really well. I've got good eyesight, but I have nothing compared to what I'll be able to see at that time because the Bible says, we were talking about this yesterday, the Bible says in Revelation 21, it says that they would be able to see the river coming down from God in heaven and coming down to the earth. Can you imagine? Now, that seems to us like, wow, that's a long ways. But really, in eternity, there's no such thing as like distance. I mean, you could be there, be back here, but you see everything. That's going to be a wonderful time, isn't it? So I get excited about Christmas because it's God taking back pagan holidays. I love, I love when I hear really, really good Christian music. Now, I know that we, we love Christian music, but no matter what genre that you prefer of Christian music, I'm sure everyone has some type of Christian music that you say, eh, I don't really like that. Does anybody have some choices that you like? Well, there's some stuff that you, you may not like. There's some things that you do like. Um, but I, I love to see God take back over the music. I love to see, hear really, really good music, especially stuff that, you know, a lot of times people don't want to leave the world because, oh, I like this kind of music and I don't want to leave it. Justin is a, uh, a good example. He comes and he'll say, hey, I got this new CD. And, you know, he used to, you know, a year ago, I'd have to put my... I'd have to put my earplugs in before I go out in the yard because he might be blasting something. And I was trying to stay holy. 
and you know, and I can't blame him. I was that way when at one point too. Anybody else? And uh, but you know, now he'll get excited. He'll say, "I got this new CD," and he'll let me hear it, and I'll be like, "Man, that's awesome!" So I love to see God's kingdom take over and impact everything. Amen. I love to see a, a football player run into the end zone and get down on his knee and point up. I love to see it because when I see that, I say, man, they're doing what God intended for them to do. And what is that? He said to go ye into all the world. See, we just think of that as, okay, I got to go to India. I got to go over here. But it, it's not just speaking about that. It's also talking about go into the sports world, impact it with the kingdom. Go into the business world, impact it with the kingdom. You got to go into the school, go into government. I don't care what you have thought about government being bad. We need some kingdom people in the government to change it. Amen. So I get really excited about Christmas because it is a sign that Jesus is taking back the kingdom uh, of this earth. Amen. The earth is his, but he came and he redeemed the rulership. And guess who he put it back in whose hands? Yours. He's the king of the what? The kingdom. So what does that make us? Kings. He says, he, see, he calls us kings, but he says, just before you get a big head, just always remember I'm the king of the kings. And I'm going to give you some things that are going to be uh, under your rulership and you're going to lord over these things but just before you get a big head remember I'm the Lord of the Lords is that clear? Amen nod if you understand <laughs> um, so so they began to celebrate during this time of year Christmas and they began to celebrate during this time of year Christ and the light coming into the world. And there are some things that were changed over from, from pagan holidays to ours. And now you don't really hear anything about the Yuletide logs or uh, uh, the, the, the winter solstice. There's different places in the earth that they still celebrate. But the big thing you hear is Christmas. Amen? All across the world. That is a wonderful thing. What's bad is when we associate it with things that don't have anything to do with the Bible. We, we can have fun during Christmas. We can have, you know, we've got games that we play. Those, those things are fine, but God has to remain the priority during that time. Amen? Y'all are quiet. It's Wednesday, I guess. <clears throat> I want to... Um, Flip over to uh, to Matthew. And we're going to go to chapter two. I'm going to tell you a couple of things that might shake some of your traditional imagery when it comes to the Christmas story. Because there's, there's some things that we, uh, it's very easy that we learn from different things in our life. I, I, I remember I had a group of kids that I was teaching at, a, um, at work about computers and they got to asking me some stuff about the Bible and one of them said something about well I thought when we 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 died that you know we become angels they thought they turned into angels and I said no where is that in there well I don't know I, I just thought that's what we did and, and then I had someone say well well I thought that you know don't when you know someone does something right like some, you have to do some some stuff and an angel will will get their wings well I have to do something to, you know and I said, I said, that's that's a wonderful life. That ain't, that, <laughs> that's not the Bible. Uh, we we've got so much stuff that we associate and we think is a part of the Bible, and it's it, it, it's actually not. And we're impacted by culture, and so we wind up unless we look for it and try to find it in here, 
sometimes we can go around and we can teach things in error. Amen? Um, there's a, a common saying that if, uh, if it begins to rain and the sun is out, what, where did y'all learn that? Is that in Ecclesiastes? What, what book is that? <laughs> book of hand-me-downs. <laughs> See, we, 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 we hear this stuff, and it sticks with us, doesn't it? Every one of y'all, y'all remembered that. <laughs> Isn't it funny how easy an error can spread? Now, I know y'all are not out on the street corners proclaiming that, <laughs> but it, you, you can remember things. Now you can realize why it is so hard to unlearn things and to correct ideologies that people hold in their mind, their beliefs. Because if a first truth is a hard thing to change, a first truth is the first thing you heard that you thought was the truth. And if it is incorrect, it can be very hard to change that because the first truth is very solidified. Who wants truth, though? I want truth. We'll start with verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men. Did it say how many right there? Let's keep reading. Wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said of him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child was. Now let me ask you, where was the child? See, I done set y'all up. Y'all just waiting to be told you're wrong. See, y'all not saying anything. Where? In a house. How many picture in your mind, for some reason, three wise men coming to a stable, a manger. How many has ever thought that at one point? I have. But that's actually not true. A, when it refers to him as a child, there's some age on this boy at this point. Uh, they actually believe that there had been about five months that had passed. He was no longer in this uh in this stable with these animals. He was no longer in this, this manger area. The reason why we think we associate them together is because of Luke. Because in Luke, we see that the shepherds come. Now, when the shepherds came, he was in the manger. But when the wise men came, he was actually in the house. Let's read on. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the manger, the stable, they saw, it's the house, right? Into the house. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. I'm going to give you a couple of things here real quick that are really 
powerful things to remember about what is actually occurring here. Um, other translations about these wise men actually refers to them as magi, M-A-G-I. And it's actually where we get the word magistrate today. They were rulers. That's why we call them these three kings. But the problem is it wasn't just three. Uh, when they would travel around like this, they believed that there was actually somewhere between five and six hundred. And, and there would be a lot of people, that, a lot of churches that couldn't do these plays because after all, the whole, everybody would be up there, right? I mean, how many times? How can you represent five and six hundred people up there <laughs> coming and coming to, to see Jesus? But it, it was a lot of them. We associate it with three a lot of times because of the three gifts that were given. Amen? And But the thing is, there were many of them. And they were rulers. And they understood something very important that I want us to get out of this message tonight. They knew, based on the word, they knew that when this star appeared, that it meant that the king of the Jews was, was born. They knew that he, the Savior had come into the world. So they seen the star. Now, if you watch Discovery Channel, they'll let you know that sometime around this time, a star appeared and because of some supernova and there was stars created and this was one that was real bright but let me tell you that God ordained for this to happen I don't care about how he did it the fact is God made it happen at the design time amen <clears throat> and so this star appeared and they went there but they knew that because they were kings they were very smart they said if this is truly a king then we need to bring a gift. A king should never go before another king without a gift, ever. That's why it's important that when we come in that we have something to give to the Lord. And if you've already given your tithes or you've given your offering, it don't mean that you have to spread it out. Well, I've got to save half of this because I've got to have something to give on Wednesday. You've already given your tithes. You've done your alms. Well, you know... What you may have to offer is your praise and your worship. You need to be coming in here to give him something because he's a king. Now, even though the king is always with you, no matter where you go, God is always with you. When we come together, we know that he is here in the midst. Amen? And so we need to be bringing him something to show that he, how valuable he is to us. Even if it is a song in our heart, even if it is a meditation on his word, we don't need to be just coming in here just to, to occupy some time. It needs to be a real thing. We need to have reverence about what it is that we're doing. Man, I'm going to see the king. Even though he is with me right now, I'm going to gather in the house of the Lord with his people. Amen? And so I always want to make sure that I give him my best. If I, I, I had one time where um, sciatic nerve was really just bugging me. I mean, I, it was hurting. I had to stay out of work one day because of it. And I was having a frustrating time in the car. And Hope probably remembers this because it was bad. It was, it was really bad. And I got, I, I got out of the car. I said, stop the car, stop the car. And I had to get out. And I just started stomping my foot on the ground. And, you know, you would have thought I was mad, but I, I get aggravated when anything is wrong with my body because I don't feel like it's supposed to be. And, I mean, I, I, I don't just, I don't handle those things well because I believe so truly that I'm not supposed to have to feel that way. And so I will literally get to yelling, in the name of G, we'll be going down the, car, uh, down the road, hope we'll have to roll the window down to, so that the glass don't bust because I will rebuke it because I'm not supposed to feel down. I'm not supposed to be depressed. I'm not supposed to be hurting. And, and, and I take very seriously what the Lord said about the woman coming, coming to the unruly uh, ruler and saying, un, the unjust ruler and kept just bothering him and bothering him. He said, and, and the Bible says, Jesus said, finally, what do you think this unjust ruler is going to do? He's going to say, give her whatever she wants before she wears me out. Man, if I need something, I'll wear God out. 
And I do it because I'm obeying him. If he didn't want me to do it, he shouldn't have said it. Amen? <clears throat> and so I have a allergic reaction to, to sickness, to feeling bad. But when I am feeling, no, that was my point. Whenever, uh, whenever I had that sciatica, I remember I was back there and I had to sit down, but I said, you know what, I'm not going to let this deter me. I had to really, really focus during that time to not focus on that pain. Anybody ever had that? Oh, it is awful, isn't it? I had to really focus to not focus on that pain. I mean, I got to where I was just stretching my leg out as much as I could and flexing that muscle because I was trying to get my mind off of it. And, I, I, and as hard as I could, even though I couldn't really stand, I just began to just worship it. Lord, if this is all I can do, I mean, if I'm going to be, if I was crippled one day, I would just say, Lord, if this is all I can do, I'm going to do this as best I can because I feel like I'm supposed to give him everything, amen? I want to give him a good gift. Queen Sheba, she knew this. All kings knew this. They knew in order to prove themselves as a great king, they had to give great gifts. And so whenever Queen of Sheba, she had heard about Solomon, she understood this principle because all of them understood this principle. And so she brought in a lot of wealth with her. You attract the wealth of the king when you give to him. And so she brought in all this stuff, and before she ever saw him, she was convinced that this man is greater and his, his kingdom is greater than even the stories that I had heard. When she brought all of those gifts to give to Solomon, she was putting pressure on the king. You put pressure on a king by giving. Because if you say, here, I'm going to give you this, and they're a good king, they will say, well, I'm going to give him something better. And... And, and they'll give bigger. Oh, well, you're going to give me this much? You're so gracious. You're such a wonderful king. Here, have this. They will go back and forth giving gifts to each other. And so if a king was coming, you better get excited. There was a transfer of wealth that happened. She brought in a lot, but she left with a lot more. And she realized how great of a king that he really was. These magistrates were very smart because they knew what the word said. They knew what the prophets had prophesied. And so they realized if this is truly the king of kings, it is time to make a withdrawal and to put pressure on this king of kings. They understood this principle. You can't get anything from God without giving. There's a, there's a, there's, that's why you have to give alms because you give. If you don't have enough for the need, you have to make it into a seed. There's, that's a principle. I don't have enough. I'm going to give this. Guess what? You get more back. It just it works that way. That's how God's economy works. Elijah understood this very well. He told that woman, she said, I only have enough flour to make me and my son a cake and then we're going to die. He said, look, I'm going to paraphrase. I, I feel bad for you, but I can't do anything unless there is a kingdom principle that is activated right here. You have to give me a cake and then you'll not go hungry. See, a lot of times we've got this thing of, well, I, Lord, I, I need something first. Jesus talked about the woman who put in the two mites, and he said, it don't matter what you think. This woman put in more than every one of you because you put in what you had to spare, but she put in everything she had. That lets me know right there that a gift, the value of a gift is in how much it costs you not how much it is. You can give me a thousand dollars, but if you have a million, 
You've given me a small fraction of what you have. If you give me $10 and all you have is $10, you gave me 100% of all the money you gave. Who gave more? They gave the same. No, they didn't. The one gave everything that he had. This woman had put in everything she had. These keys, they were smart. They said, we got to, there's the star. It's time, we've been saving up. It's time to make a withdrawal. We need to get the gold. We need to get the frankincense. We need to get the myrrh. And we got to find this king. And we've got to go and we've got to give this great gift to the king of kings. Myrrh was a very important thing that they gave him because myrrh was what the rich would use to embalm bodies. If you weren't rich, then you would be thrown into the potter's field where all the clay pots were. But they brought him this because they knew what was going to happen. If this guy's truly a king, he deserves, because he is royalty, we got to make sure he has what he needs. And myrrh was very expensive. Only the rich would be embalmed. We're going to make sure he has what he needs. We're going to take this myrrh. We're going to take this frankincense. We're going to take this gold. And when they found him, they gave it to him. They were literally putting pressure on the king of kings. When they left there, they didn't leave with wagons and, and all of these sheep, but they knew they had made a deposit to the king of all creation, the ancient of days. What do we give to the king today? I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about our heart. What do we make this time about? Is it about Christ? Is it just about presents? We need to make sure if we are the ones teaching our children and our family and our generations about the Lord, we need to make sure that every single thing that we associate with Christ, that Christ is at the pinnacle of what it is we're celebrating. Not just, well, let's pray, and that's the only thing that's mentioned. It needs to be, that needs to be the number one thing. This is a joyous time. Christ came back into the earth with the government upon his shoulders. He came, the the, the son is born. The child is given. It, it, he came to redeem us, to buy us back. And the entire government came on his shoulders. These wise men, they knew it. They said, we're going we we to give everything we've got. This is a very important principle. We need to be treating He's the king of what? The kings. What are you? Kings. So when you give gifts to each other or you lend your time to each other, you go to help your fellow man, it don't need to be, well, this is just Billy Joe Bob and he don't have much and he don't know what anything is. You need to realize that this is a king. Even if they are not walking in the way that they should walk, you have to realize, I know this is a lost king, but I'm going to show him the way that we're supposed to be. Even if it's just a helping hand. Even if it's just you stopping and conversating with them. Your thoughts, I have to correct myself all the time because I, 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 get, I get very busy and sometimes I, I get... I just get so beside myself because I'm, I'm going in a motion of getting stuff done and I have to slow myself down because I have to remember that I'm dealing with people and if they're people, they're kings. If you were going to meet President George Bush, he was having a birthday party and you were invited because you voted for him on the ballot. 
And somehow he found out. And you got a letter in your mailbox that I want to invite you out to my Texas ranch. And, I, and he enclosed a ticket for you to come. He wants you to come and to celebrate his birthday with him. I don't think any of us in here, if we were invited to such a function, would go over there with a little dollar gift. <laughs> would you? It don't matter if this is the first birthday party you've ever been to the man. You, you really, he's very important to you. You might like him. Maybe you don't. So just substitute Bush for somebody you like. <laughs> you would say, man, this guy gets a lot. He's got a lot of money. He's got a, you know, I want to make sure that I give him something so he knows that he's valuable, that I appreciate him. You would spend more on him than, than you probably do some of your family members. I know that I would. Is that the truth? Because you want to show that he's valuable. And guess what? You wouldn't show up at his doorstep with a bathrobe and some bathrobe and some bath slippers, would you? No. You would go rent a, a, a dress or get the nicest thing you have. Because when you present yourself to him, you want to make sure that you present something really good so you put a lasting image. Because you never know what this man might be able to give to you. Wouldn't you? Let me be more real. If you were going for a job interview, everybody in here has been on a job interview, you would go there dressed to impress because you want to represent yourself and you want to sell yourself to this person that, hey, I am a good candidate for this position because they could reward you with a position, a job, right? You go in there, slouchy, half your buttons buttoned up, guys, chest hair flying all over the place, you're going, to, you're going to probably leave without a job. He's got a business suit and a tie, and he's going to be offended. Amen? I've always heard you're supposed to dress the way you want to be addressed, and I, I, I think that's very important. So how do you want God to see you? How do you want people to see you? Are we putting off our best to people at all times? Or do we have a group of people that we really, man, oh, I'm, I'm, I've been fasting and praying all week, and then you get around these other people and say, get out of my way, you get on my nerves. I mean, we've got, we got people who have personality disorders going on. They are two different people. I've seen it. I've seen people caught in the act where I've seen them just acting outside of the character that I thought they were. And then you come up and you say, hey, and they say, oh, hey, hey, and all of a sudden they're trying to fix everything. I get on to my wife sometimes, and it's not really get on to, but I, I know everybody will get a kick out of this because I know you all probably do it. But anytime we're going to have somebody come over to the house, we have to clean things that we've never cleaned. I've never been dressed cleaning before. And I say, Hope, when are we going to stop pretending? We need to be who we are. This is, this is vain, and it's, it, it's fake. <laughs> And she said, and she says, no, I want things to look nice. And I'm like, why? Are you trying to put on a show? Be real with the people. Leave, leave those hanging on the fan. <laughs> That's how we are sometimes with other saints. We've got a lot of mess that we don't want anybody to know about. But as soon as we know they're in the vicinity or they're coming, all of a sudden we're trying to clean things up, fix stuff up. We need to figure out who it is we're supposed to be and be that. The Bible says if you're going to live, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to uh, preach the gospel, you should live the gospel. Amen. All the time, morning, noon, and night. Amen. I don't want to pretend. I want people to realize that this time. 
is a time of giving. It's a time to remember that the light has come into the world. And guess what? We're also the light of the world because he is inside of us. And we need to represent his kingdom as good ambassadors, doing our reasonable service. And we need to show everyone that's around us, even the family. I know you're going to see family members. You, you, you only see them this time of year because you can't stand to be around them. I know we all have some. Love them. Does anybody have family members? You, you, you don't have a family member in any part, any sect of your family that doesn't agitate you a little? Everybody has it, right? Am I, am I spelling the truth here? Love them. Show them what a good kingdom citizen is about. People want to come to America because they see what Americans are like. People should want to get into the kingdom so bad because they see what the kingdom is like through you. Amen? Y'all stand with me. Brother Bonner is going to come and give a word. Look at that. That's, this is a record for me. This is much shorter than normal. I got a word for you, brother. You're in trouble when you get home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. First of all, I want to uh, testify real quick. Something happened uh, at work today. I work with some seniors. I love working with seniors. They're my, well, let's just say they're probably my favorite group of people. Amen. Get along real well. Work in different areas, different places. They were through uh, my division and that through, you know, plumbing and stuff. And I was coming in through the building. And uh, I think I was coming out of my boss's office and um, was coming down through there. And I was testifying. And as I was testifying, uh, let me just tell you how it happened. I'll just start like that. I'm coming out through there and there's some people in the foyer. And uh, one of the elderly ladies, she said, boy, I tell you what, you're moving pretty good on that foot. It looks like, you, like you're getting around pretty good there. I said, thank you, ma'am. God's been really good to me. They know that I'm a preacher. They know that. So I said, the Lord's been really good to me. I said, let me tell you what the doctor said. The doctor said that uh, perhaps in several months, you, months you'll be able to uh, maybe limp around a little. I'm like, mm-mm. Now, I didn't tell him this. I listened to what he said. But in my spirit, I'm saying, mm-mm. And so I went on, and, and uh, he said, now, if you, if you get in any trouble with this, uh, you may be seated. If you get in any trouble with this foot, perhaps you might get a plate or a rod in it and some screws and everything. And I'm thinking to myself, mm -mm. I already knew in my heart what I wanted, and that's what I was believing. And so God's been really good to me. And I testified about how God has helped me. And telling them how that the enemy told me one day when I was down in my den praying and, and meditating and reading the word of God, how the enemy spoke to me and said, you'll never dance on that foot again. And so I was just down there one day and the Holy Ghost got me. Amen. And then I just got back to it. I went to dancing. I, I, I just went to dancing before I caught myself and I said, that's what you get, devil. And I was testifying to these people earlier today, and I said, while I'm at it, let me tell you about another miracle. When I was just a little boy, I said when I was a little boy, I remember I had sugar diabetes, and uh, my mom took me to church, just a little fella, and I remember, they said, if anybody wants prayer, come down, and so my mom took me down, and I remember looking up into the preacher's face, and uh, he said, do you think that God can heal you? I said, mm-hmm. He said, do you think that God will heal you? I said, well, I'm just a kid, you know. I, don't, hey. I said, sure I do. They laid hands on me. God healed me. I've never had any trouble since. Amen? And I'm standing there saying these things and, and continuing to testify and share about the, the miracles that God's done in my life. And I said, let me tell you one more. I said, my wife and I have always loved kids. And uh, my wife's always always been pretty sick. When we married, she was she was." Uh, little sickly then and uh, she loves children I love children 
and uh, and so couldn't really ever ever have any uh, success with him. And so that went on. Some days I'd come home and Donna would be crying. I'd say, "What's wrong?" I knew what was wrong with him. I knew what was wrong with him. And she'd say, "Nothing. I'll be okay." I knew what it was. And so I just continued to pray. I remember one day praying. I said, "Now, Lord, if I, you know, if there's if there's no kids, I'll still be all right. I'm going to love you. This does not affect whether I serve you or not." Amen. And so, um, time went on, and Donna and I were walking through the mall one day. Back then, it was Greenville Mall. Still is right now, a bunch of stores and stuff. And uh, we were walking along. I didn't really hear what the man of God said. Uh, he was he and his wife pastored a church in Cross Hill, South Carolina. I walked ahead, and uh, he stopped down, and I think what he told her was, about this time next year, you'll have a little girl. She told me, and I said, well, that's that's nice. I sort of believed, but I, I really didn't probably like she did, so things went on, and uh, uh, she conceived, and everything it went well and everything, so here she is. Amen? It was a real miracle baby. And so I was testifying to them about all these things and, and, and uh, telling them about the miraculous and different things like that. And the power of God fell in that place. And this one woman was like, oh, glory to God. She, oh, man, she got to, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm like, listen, don't start a riot. I got nervous, and so I went back and went in the office and came back, and uh, she was still hollering. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I praise you. And the, and the rest of these ladies are in there. They're like, where can I get, you know? They're already sitting, excuse me, where can I get? I need to get out of here, you know? And I was saying, uh, all you have to do is believe. And this one lady, I mean, it just the power of God fell in there and actually made me nervous, amen? And so what happened today after that happened, just the just to get the faith God on me, it hasn't left me all day. I still feel it. And so if you need something from God tonight, just come up. Now what's God going to do? I, I don't know that. I just know I have to get the faith on me. That will be up to God, amen? I couldn't tell you. So if you need prayer tonight, come on up. <clears throat> I remember, or if you'd like to be prayed for, I remember also there was a, another elderly lady, and she was coming down the hallway one morning, and this will really increase your faith, down one of the corridors where they stay. And, and uh, she said, Preacher, I want you to remember me. I'm, I've been really sick in my body. And um, I said, Okay. I said, but I'm not going to remember you later. I'm going, and this is on the job. This is on the job. What was that? This was on the job, and uh, she said, remember me. I said, I'm not going to remember you later. I'm going to remember you now. And uh, so I laid my hand up on her shoulder, and I'm telling you what's the truth. The power of God fell in that hallway, and this lady that was screaming, I mean, she was Got jam. She got to dancing, and man, it was just. I'm standing there, you know, laughing, smiling, and um, there was people coming out, and she was getting. And it kind of made me nervous, amen, because I'm on the job, but I obeyed God anyway. But I want to share that with you because the power of God is so real, and that just really made my day. And I hope it speaks something into your spirit and increases your faith. And while the gift of faith is on me, I want you to come up tonight, and if you need something from God, let me pray for you. Let us pray for you. If you believe in God for anything, if not, then that's that's fine. But if you want to, come up and we'll pray with you. What's God going to do? If you if you ask me that, I have to say I don't know. I'm not God. I just know when it is and when it isn't. And so whatever you're believing for, we'll, uh, we'll pray for you. Amen. That is really one of the greatest miracles probably I've ever seen in my life was when Brittany was born. I, I remember, you know, the doctors coming to me and, and uh, they were just really hunting something, you know, they figured maybe something might be wrong with her, I guess, and just wanted to check her or anything. And there was never anything wrong with her. I was so proud of her and uh, still am proud of her. And that was a real, real miracle. So I really feel God. I really feel the gift of faith. And so we want to give God 
I'm, a, I'm not really a, somebody came up to me in church one day. They didn't mean any harm, but they told me, they said, you know, you don't receive well. You're not a real, you're not real good at receiving. That's because, that's because I'm more of a giver. I receive if somebody gives me something. I, I receive. They wouldn't be mean to me. They say, you know, you don't. You act like you don't receive well, because I'm a giver. I'm just. I'm a real giver. I don't. I don't feel like I need a lot. God's already been good to me, and uh, continue to be good to me. I'm more of a giver. I just like to give all the time. Amen. And so, whatever God does, God does tonight, or wants to do, I want to share that with you. Amen. Yes, sir. Where's Nathan, the prophet? Come on, brother. That boy can preach. He can preach and he can teach and uh, learn a lot from him. Learn a lot from him. You know, I, I was I was telling those those seniors this morning. I said, you may have never uh, experienced anything like that. You may have never seen a miracle or really experienced a miracle. But and they were looking at me like, no, we don't. We're not like that at church. But told him, I said, that doesn't make it not so. Just because you don't believe, that doesn't make it not so. Just like when the doctor told me what he had to say, I received that. I received that. I knew that he knew what he was talking about it, about it at the time, but that doesn't mean that's what I'm going to get. He can call me stubborn and honorary if he was here tonight, if he wanted to. That's not what I was having. Now, I know I have the gift of faith. I know that. It's uh, somebody said one time, well, you just get things real easy from God. Well, that, that may be so, and I'm, I'm glad I'm like that. And so I'm glad to be able to say, I want to share that. If I've got it on me, then I want to share that. Does that make me any different than anybody else? No. It's something that God does. But let me tell you something. Everything that God did for me, uh, are we still on? I'm going to look out there and tell you, everything that he did for me, he can do for you. He's no respect to our persons. Maybe, maybe I am like a little child in my heart. I feel like a little kid right now in my heart in a candy store. Somebody told me, you want it all. You want all of God's, you know, you want all of God's God. I said, I thought I was supposed to be that way. Didn't you tell me that I was his kid and I'm a king? I just really believe. I tell people that. Now, Yes, I was on my job, but that doesn't change God. That's when I'm the most anointed. I feel the most anointed most of the time when I'm out in the public. Oh, that's when God anoints me the greatest. Uh, and most of the time when I least expect it and when he just wants to do something, boom, he's right there. And they can't get out from under. It's a beautiful thing. It's not me. And what he has done for me as far as the miraculous uh, you know, the miracles he's done, he'll do it for you. And maybe tonight you might say, well, I, I just, mm, I don't feel anything. I just don't, um, I, I, I don't feel that faith. Can I also tell you, you don't have to feel nothing. You don't even have to feel the anointing. Did you realize that? I always thought it was Pentecostal. If I don't see people laying in the floor and I don't see them dancing and shouting and you got to tell them to put them in the back of the car or the trunk or whatever you're going to do, and get them home and undress and put them in the jammers and put them in the bed, then it didn't happen. That's not true. I've been healed before and didn't feel nothing. And then felt the mighty power of God and the person didn't get healed. But tonight, I know that this is God. So whether I feel anything or not, that's up to God to do what he wants to do.
to pray. Any want to come to you guys on the internet? We just want to thank you for watching tonight. We pray that you know this Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of lords, the King of kings. He is the God of gods. There is no one else beside him who stands alone. If you don't know him, I want you just to pray this prayer right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I know that I have done wrong, and I need you to come into my heart. I accept the sacrifice that you made on the cross, the blood that you shed on Calvary for my sin. And I confess and acknowledge you as my Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you prayed that prayer, I promise you if you prayed that from your heart, you are his. And he is in you. And there is a book that is in heaven, which is the home country, and your name has been documented down as one of the citizens. And now you have rights. There is benefits. All you got to do is find out what they are. Get in that Bible. Get in that constitution of heaven. That's the holy Bible. And find out what it is. If you need anything, we ask you just to uh, go go to our website, lmcigreenville.org. Click on contact up, tack, uh, up top, and then you can just type in whatever it is. If you have a prayer request, if you have a need, just let us know. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. We hope you have a Merry Christmas. Ricky Bag will be preaching on Sunday morning, so join us then at 11 a.m. We love you. God bless.